All right. Are we live? We're live. Outstanding. Where's you got your mic? Yeah, you got your mic. Buddy. Oh, yeah. I, gotta... I, I need to bring you. I have another one of these mics at my house. I need to bring it to you. Just so, Yeah, you do. Just so we're, you know, the same across the board. And I, so, I need to I need to have a sound guy like this, man. That's that's gotta be so nice. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Keith, it takes <laughs> it takes years and years, man, to, <laughs> before you get get yeah. to where you got your own tech guy, Jeez. you know. Yeah. And uh they're you know, they're expensive too. Tech guys are really expensive. I've I been hear, working man. for a long time to get me a uh, you know, a, a tech dog here and I run across him, you know, I, I had everything squared away. I just oh, didn't man. have anybody to do the work. Yeah, so. man, no, that's nice. Like I, I, it would help so much. Just, just seeing that switchboard right there, man, you switching the cameras. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, if you're going to film a podcast, you have to have somebody that's just dedicated to, to running all that equipment. It's hard. Like the, the viewers, what's up YouTube. What's up by the way, YouTube. What's happening, man? What is it? A Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, a Tuesday at eleven o'clock. Is anybody on YouTube? Yeah, we got about uh, seventy-five or so. Dang, that's pretty good for a Tuesday at eleven o'clock. Most, <laughs> I, I, I'm always astounded at how many people tune in to our YouTube lives I, in the in the middle of the day, man. What, it's like, it's, yeah, like what, what, these people have a job or I just. What the heck, you two? What are y'all doing, man? <laughs> or if you ever get like, you know, if you just want to go run a quick errand in town and it's like 1130 in the morning, but you get in there and the traffic's just crazy. You're like, man, what? Aren't these po people supposed to be at work? And I have thought that many but times. at the same time, they're probably thinking the same thing about it's me. Singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the it's truth, so, son? So, uh, yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. So, podcasting. By the way, YouTube, we got a special guest for you here today. Our brother Keith. What's up, man? I appreciate um, you. Thank having you for me on. coming, man. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I, We're about to be podcasting neighbors. Did you know that? Blake just told me, like, man, y'all could have y'all could have just texted me. Y'all would have to get me in person to tell me that. Like, <laughs> was y'all just afraid you were you were afraid I was gonna respond or react? So y'all just like y'all y'all planned it. Hey, let's yeah, tell we in did. person. Kind of lower the intimidation factor, you know. Gotcha. It's yeah. the perfect place to build a podcast studio, though, man. In my opinion, I mean, I don't know what your what your experience has been since you've been in there, but like, it seems like just a super chill, super quiet. Yeah, the perfect size space to to kind of build it out. It's perfect, man. It was a blessing for me because, like, that no, he didn't have any spaces available when I when I first looked into it like yeah. we were we were trying to do it out of our home and i was telling him we would get 10 minutes into recording the dog would start barking like crazy at the ups guy so much so to where we would have to stop yeah next episode the cat would jump up on the table and like hit the hit the wrong button make all the make all the microphones go crazy mm -hmm. so i was like all right just i just put the feelers out in the universe i was like please god just help us give us some direction here so i had tech jeff bennett couple of months prior to that and he's like man i'm sorry man we don't have any spaces available but i'll let you know if something changes well after about that second episode he shot me a text said hey i just had a whole company move out of a whole building like some kind of a medical company huh so that created like 10 spaces and it's so much so to where he's him and his dad are like into construction yeah so they yeah. can they can configure rooms and move walls around to how how you want it so i had i had that option too to kind of cater my and design my room space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was a cool man so so keith man what got you into podcasting that's it's always interesting for me to hear right i don't know that we've ever told our story about what got us into podcasting but i mean ooh, just kick that mic stand it's a big endeavor dude uh it is you know it's a there's a steep learning curve especially if you're like me and you don't know anything about recording equipment microphones cameras you don't know anything about sound, uh, how to upload audio files, how to, you know, yeah. where you're going to host it online. Like the learning curve is really, really steep. It's like anything else, though. The only way to learn it is just to jump into it and get after it. But I mean, this, the I think the learning curve is a big part of what stops people from creating a podcast. It's like for me, if you've got something to say, or you know you have strong opinions, or you have some some sort of skill set that you want to share. Uh, why would you not have a podcast? Like it's unbelievable that we have this 
available. The ability to do this is available to us. If you think what, just, I don't know, what, 20 years ago, the only people who could broadcast something like this would be, you know, the few yeah. people who had this radio thing set up with freaking antennas and right. all this yeah. stuff, right? It's like now anybody can do this. And I know a lot of people try it. Not a lot of people stick with it, but a lot of people don't ever even try it. And I think it's because of the learning curve. So what? why did you get into podcasting? Well, it's just to, to, to reach more people and give more value to because – just like you, you guys have stuff the world needs to hear. And I felt like in the health and wellness space and in the direction America is heading with their just overall health, mm -hmm. we needed, we wanted to reach more people, you know, outside of our community. You know, if it's, if it's just, just somebody writing back saying, Hey man, because I've listened to your show, I'm now off my blood pressure medication. That's, that's a win. So that was the reason we got into it. But yes, I didn't realize the mountain that I was about to have to climb as far yeah. as the, the learning aspect, you talk about school of hard knocks, man, which looking back, I don't regret learning any of it the hard way because it's been the best way, mm -hmm. but it's been a mountain to climb, man. Like, you know, I first started off just on my phone and just getting people on like the phone, trying to hit recording. What? Trust me, that's a good place to start, but it was, the quality wasn't there. Mm -hmm. The quality wasn't where I wanted it to be. So we, we invested in the soundboard and then learn how to use it. And then we want to bring in the visual. So cameras and, um, you know, for me, it's been a lot of wasted money on adapters yeah. and certain things. So it's, it's been, it's been very, very challenging, but we're almost a year in. So we, really? we, okay. we made a promise to ourselves before we got started. Hey, cause I knew, I knew me, I knew how, how I'm wired. If once I I'm invested in something, I want to go, I want to stick to it and stay committed to it. So we have dropped an episode every Monday morning. We just dropped 43. So we're about to hit our one year. Anniversary. Wow, yeah. man. So one been, a week for a year. Yeah. One a week for a year. And we don't plan on letting up. And we, like you guys, I know some weeks you're, you're, you got just one episode in the bank. And then some weeks you might have three or four. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the perfect world. If you can have three or four in the bank mm -hmm. lined up to drop, but I know you guys go live. So I don't know how that works. Yeah, for YouTube. yeah, for us, we I mean, we rarely keep any any episodes in the bank. Like, uh, yeah. we're just we, you know, we're just Wednesday is our podcasting day where we sit down and you know that's what now every now and then like this week we're recording on Tuesday, so we won't have to sit down right. tomorrow and do a podcast. We're gonna film a bunch of YouTube videos tomorrow, you but um, but yeah, man, it's uh, it is it. it and like you said, the the I think the key to podcasting, which is really the key to anything, consistency, is consistency, yeah. man. Yeah. And that's you know once you once you do get over the learning curve, and like you said, you do. It costs a lot of money. You waste a lot of money in the beginning. Me and Blake started our podcast with a little USB Yeti microphone. <laughs> So cheap um, that you had to buy three of them to get one to yeah. work. Yeah, <laughs> and the first episode we actually went to sit down and record, we sat down with the individual, Paul Wilder, as a matter of fact. And we used to not have a studio, so we had to go to Paul's house. He's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I got a room down here in the basement we can sit in, you know. And we hooked this microphone up, and the dang microphone doesn't even work. <laughs> it won't even, like, it just doesn't work. It's not picking up any sound. Uh, so then we're like, well, yeah, this... we drove all the way over here. Uh, now, we, now we not only wasted our time, but we wasted his time, and we look like idiots. So, like these well, are the we were. these are the stupid things that you have to go through to start mm -hmm. anything. Um, it, it's just part of the process, right? And then the consistency part, the the hard part about being consistent, especially with a podcast, is this. The podcast, you know, as a form of content is a long term thing. Yeah. So, like, you can get much faster response or you can build a following much faster on YouTube, on, uh, on Instagram, on any of these other platforms. It's been my experience that you experience that uh 
gratification or the reward. You're rewarded for yeah. the work you're putting in right. much quicker. Yeah. But for a podcast, for some reason, it is a very slow growing yeah. form of content. And and I think that is because it mostly grows by word of mouth. I think that's why it grows so slow. And so for us, we've been podcasting now for what, like three years? That was going to be my question to you. Yeah, long, well, long well no, about four years now. About yeah. four years? That was the first thing we started. We've got 300 and some odd episodes. And, um, wow. and in the beginning, when we first started, it just it was just so ridiculous. It's like, I, I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. You know, I'm taking the time to sit down and, and do these, uh, the time out of your day to sit down and do these episodes. And there's no reward, instant and, gratification. Yeah, and you put it up and it's like three people listen to it, you know? And it's and there was a time actually yeah. where I almost quit our podcast. During I, deer season, wasn't it? Yes, I almost quit the 307 podcast. And, and this would have been probably close to a year in, all right? And I'm thinking everything else had done well. The Instagram was growing, everything, you know, we had interaction in all these other places. Yeah. And I thought, I, I remember telling my wife, it was deer season, like Blake said, I was honed in on hunting. And I was like, I'm, I'm not recording a freaking podcast, man. And my wife was like, no, like, you done came it, this far. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, even if you only have 20 people that listen to your podcast, um, like you've made a commitment to those 20 people, you know? Yeah. And, and so I went and recorded a pot and, and we kept it going. And literally too, the interesting thing is you'll see again, it's, it's such a great measure of like how everything else works with the podcast. It'll grow. It'll hit a peak and then it'll just kind of taper off, taper mm -hmm. off for, for sometimes for months and months and months. And you're like, man, this thing, why isn't this growing anymore? Like, as a matter of fact, it's like, there's actually less people listening than there was, you know, a month ago. What the yeah. heck? And it, but, but it, always, if you will just stay with it, it will, it will start to go up again for some reason. And then when it peaks the next time, it'll be a little higher than than the previous time it peaked. Yeah. You know, there'll be a few hundred more. Uh, and 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 it just does if you looked at the trajectory of like the analytics of the 307 podcast, it is just waves, man. Waves. But every wave has been a little higher than the other. And the coolest thing is that the people who listen to your podcast are the most important people, yeah. in my opinion. Because it's like, it's more of a relational type thing. That's it what is. I love about, you know, the people who listen to the podcast versus the people who just watch a truck talk episode on YouTube that's five minutes or see something that I post on Instagram. Yep. The people who listen to the podcast, like, they they actually have a feel yeah, they know for what we're all about. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? And we're connected. And that's the coolest thing because when I when I've run into hundreds of people over the last few years, and whether it's at a race or at an event, a training mission that we do here at 307 Project, what and I and I run into these people and they're podcast listeners and they're and they're like, dude, I feel like me and you have like we've been buddies for the last three years. Yeah. And I'm like, that was the goal. Yep. That's the goal of the podcast. And that's what makes it unique from any other it form is. of content. Yeah, when you got people coming up to you like at the gym saying that was that was such a cool story about when you were a kid. You know, they they know you. They, yep. know, they know you better than just surface level. Like because like what you just said, a lot of your short form content on Instagram, it's just it's just surface level stuff, you know, more for quick views. But the the podcast, if they're a if they're a loyal listener, they know some layers to you. Yes. Yeah, and they've seen you go through right. like yeah. your at least me anyways, like my highs, my lows, my times in my life where I'm distracted by crazy things yeah. or the times that I'm on track and it's just awesome that it all gets to come through on a platform like this. So um 
What what it, what actually inspired you to go with the podcast though? Like, do you have do you, did you have a show that you really liked, or were you a podcast listener? Or? I had no. I've, I've I just got into listening to podcasts probably two three years ago. Uh, of course, you know your buddy Andy Frisella. Yep. What's what's his called? Um, Real AF. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Just listening to him and my buddy Bradley dropping bombs and. Of course, Ed Milet stuff. Um, Nick, Nick Bear. Nick Bear, yep. 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 And just, I knew how much value I had got out of those those episodes. 100%, and, man. And I was, you know, uh, at a point in, where I was wanting to kind of level up in my business or businesses and reach more people. Because I felt like, you know, I've lived in the same town my whole life. And I feel like from a local standpoint, you know, I've done pretty, I made a pretty good little footprint. But there's a lot of people, like I said earlier, outside of, outside of Floyd County that I think that need help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to hear what we got to say. Yeah. So how do you do that? You know, I'm not a, I'm not a social media person. I'm I'm kind of an introvert. Uh, don't have a crazy personality, and I've always been super quiet and shy. So just for me to even start putting my face on camera was a big deal. So I'm still not super comfortable with it. I mean, I remember going to an event in Salt Lake City, Utah last year where. Rob Bailey called me out. He's like, what's, what's the one fear keeping you from taking the next step in your business? And I said, man, just, just putting too much pressure on myself and what I look like and what people will think I sound like, you know? Oh yeah. I remember you know, country, that country, country hick from Rome, Georgia, you know, and just all the comments going to become flooding in. And, um, finally, you know, I just got tired of that ultimately being the, the, the wall, the fear. I just came right back and got my, my little broom closet of an office at the smoothie shop and just put my cell phone up on the, on the table and hit record and posted my first video of me just talking about, I think I just, something was on my heart about how modern luxuries have made it soft, like, like DoorDash and Instacart and how it's nice to use those things, but don't, you know, uh, don't just become this just lazy piece of crap and never just like, you know, be active and wash your own car for goodness sake. You know, we yep. did everything's just a push button now mm-hmm. posted that video and man, it got some good views and people said they liked it. It gave me a little bit of a, I guess, confidence boost. So I posted another one and, uh, and then I just kept kind of putting little check marks in the boxes. All right. Overcome that fear. What's another angle I can attack this and podcast was on my heart. So yeah, dude, I, I, um, it's really cool that you brought that up because you're you're earlier in your journey in terms of this cameras and all this yeah. than I, I've been I've been doing this now for um, a few more years and but I remember exactly the feeling that you're describing yeah like I remember going I think it was actually in Salt Lake City the first podcast that I was invited to be a part of that was being filmed. And I remember the dang camera. They had this camera on this, some sort of boom, and the camera was constantly moving. And I don't know if it was to capture like all the different Different angles. angles, It was a really highly produced show. Um, And I just remember like how uncomfortable that was. And same as you, man, like even just how, how you sound, like I don't like the way I sound on on a, on a microphone. Um, I can't, I I can't listen to my own podcast that I, you know, record with other people or that we record here. I was about to ask you, do you even listen to your, I can't dude. It is something about my own voice drives me. I don't know. Drives me nuts. I don't know what it is. It's it's weird, but like overcoming those things, that's a huge step, man. Yeah. Yep. And the only way that you overcome those things is just to freaking just do it yep. over and over and over and over. It's been the again. year, the, the, la- the last 10, 10 months has been the year of just super uncomfortableness, man. Like, yeah, crazy, like to the point where you, some days I just don't know if I can take it. Like, is it, is it worth it? You know, and then I'll, I'll sleep, get some good night's sleep and wake up the next day feeling a little bit more hopeful. And yeah, you're right. You know, when you're putting in this much mental 
physical and spiritual and financial energy into something and you look up you look up at your algorithms and you see you only got like you know a hundred loyal listeners it's like is this really worth it yeah but it just goes back to commitments i made to myself you yeah. know in the beginning that we were going to just keep keep dropping episode every week no matter what and there's been there's been times where we had guests you know bell on us last minute and my girlfriend, she's kind of, kind of my co-host, and uh, she couldn't make it. I, I didn't know what to really talk about. I literally had to just slot myself in the podcast dude, just to give some content for the listeners because they're expecting it, and I made a promise to myself. I had to kind of sit there for a minute and think about something to speak on by myself Yep. just to, just to put something out, and I would get 10 minutes into it and be like, Man, this, is, this is bull, and I would hit stop. I'd have to go for a walk. Or run, come on, dude. Collect myself, I, dude. Come on, and, man. Uh, <laughs> what, but dude, I, I love, I love this. I, I don't, I don't know if I, this is just like giving you guys who watch this stuff a little behind the scenes of what it actually looks like. Yeah. To 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 do what we do on YouTube on podcasts. So I, I thank you for saying that. Okay, because yeah. this is behind this is behind the scenes. So I have I have people all the time that you know the um the people who aren't in the arena the people who aren't in the fight the people who are the freaking armchair quarterbacks uh, of of uh internet land the critics like, yeah the critics I I have people all oh so you think your life is so hard uh, you know, making a podcast or making a, a U- YouTube video, like they don't understand the 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 mental energy that it takes to, first of all, be thoughtful enough in your day to day life to to pay attention to like the things that are impacting you, the things that the recalling lessons that you've learned recalling all these things and and just paying attention to your day-to-day so that you actually even have something to share, all right? Paying attention to those things and then trying to figure out how you're going to articulate those things to people Uh, and then executing it to the standard that you Mm -hmm. want it to be at. It is absolutely exhausting, man. Literally, this morning, I just recorded two truck talk episodes. Okay. Now, sometimes when you go and you do stuff like a podcast or you do stuff like a, a YouTube video or whatever, sometimes you're on, dude. Yeah. And sometimes you I can sit down that there there will be a day that I can sit down and I can crank out five, six, seven episodes of truck talk back to back to back, and they're just on, man. But like this morning. I drove my little truck down back in the woods. I'm giving y'all some behind the scenes stuff here. All right. Drove my little truck back in the woods. First of all, there's pressure because there's no truck talk in the queue to release today. There has to be a truck talk in the queue to release today. Right. It's not there. So I have to create that. I have a short window of time this morning because I had to spend time with my wife, read my Bible, eat yeah. breakfast, and I had to be here at 11 o'clock. Get the egg out of your beard. Well, yeah, there's, that, <laughs> that didn't work out for me. So I have a short window of time. Something has to be done. I pulled a truck back in the woods. I'm recording these truck talks, man. And and this this morning was one of those mornings, like you said, you get started into it, and you're just like, this ain't it. Oh. Th- this ain't really how I feel. Press stop. Yeah, delete. You, you, restart. You, you feel like it was forced. Like you're just saying something just to have something to say, to have content versus these come from a different angle of meaning and you, you eventually find it. Yep. You just got to hang in there. You got, that's it, man. Then that's, that was this morning for me. Yeah. For me this morning to rec- record two five minute clips. Probably took you 45 minutes. It took me an hour. An hour. Yeah. To record two five minute clips. Now that doesn't always happen. No. But but like I'm putting this stuff out there to you guys, and I feel a sense of responsibility in that. Yeah. So if I say something that isn't truly, if I say it in a way that isn't truly representative of my 
thoughts or my heart or my passion on the topic, I'm going to restart it. Yeah. And dude, that's mentally freaking exhausting. It is, man. So I'm glad I'm not the only one that, that goes through that because it, like you said, it don't happen every week, but some weeks, man, it's like that. And gosh, grace of God, we hang in there and make it happen somehow, brother. Well, like it's, it's really cool that you also said that when you have those days where you just, you just can't, you, you're just not flowing, man. It's like, if you will just stay with it, like you said, you got to take, get out, take yep. a walk, go, you got to reset, man. Yep. As soon as you let the frustration creep in, like it's over, you ain't going to come back from it. You, you have to, you have to say, no, nope, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. It took me, it took me, it was about a two hour window of just trying a few, not feeling it, hitting stop, and then going for like a 20 minute walk and then coming back, then doing the, the real 45 minute episode. It took me like two hours Yep, just to get that done on a, on a Sunday afternoon, knowing that our audience is expecting something at, by 5 a.m. the next morning, every Monday. Yep. So there's that other layer of pressure for sure. And then knowing all the while that you're doing this because you're just simply you're passionate about it. It's not going to make you any money. No. You're, you're, you, I mean, it might it years might. down the road. Yeah. But right now, well, that's it, it, there's no there's no financial reward. It's not like if I if I get this episode out, I'm going to make ten grand off of this episode. You know. Well, and that's that's what gets me about some of my and I love them to death, but some of my more um, techie friends that have been considering a podcast, doing up starting a podcast for years, they'll they'll message me from time to time asking me, you know, well, you know, how how much how, how much are you monetizing now off people off ask me that all the or, time, yeah. Uh, you know, what is your, all these, all these techie questions that I probably should know. Um, but I, I, I always tell them and maybe, and I was telling Blake earlier that I'm getting to a point where maybe I should look into doing a little bit more advertising, even if it's just me sharing it on my personal Facebook, <laughs> just simple stuff like that. I've just been hitting record and just giving value, value, not really expecting anything in return. And, but, oh, but that, that has, that, that is what, that that's the key in the beginning. Yeah, and that, I kn I knew that, and that's why I don't get too caught up in the numbers and the views right now. But like you said, you can't help but look every now and then, mm -hmm. you know, because it's on your phone. And um, I always tell them the same thing. The guys ask these questions. I'm like, look, man, I'm just I'm just trying to give value right now. Value, value. You know, one day if it makes me a few dollars or or create some opportunities, that's awesome. But that's not why I'm doing this. I'm not doing it for the money. Yep. Yep, you got to come at it with it with that type of heart, and I think you got to come at anything, yeah, that's any project, say. any any business, any anything that you want to do with your life. If you come at it from the angle right off the bat of saying I'm doing this in order to make money, right yeah. off the bat. It, it, you might make some money, like, yeah. but there's there. It's it's not going to become a lasting thing. Nope. Like that is just the way it works. Any if you if you are gonna come at something, you got to come at it from the angle of, man. I want to provide value for free. Yes. To people, uh, and I'm gonna do that as long as it takes. And one day, if it becomes how I make my living, that would be amazing. Yes, but sir. if not, no big deal. Yep. So there's y'all some behind the scenes conversation of what is actually like. And and look, I'm not I'm not looking for sympathy here. I I freaking love what I do. There's nothing else that I would rather do yep. than what than what we do here at 307 Project. I, I'm not looking for your sympathy. I just think it's good to give you guys some perspective. On uh, on what on what it's freaking like, and what I think it takes that, to keep it glued together. Yeah, man. And I think day. you guys can take away from this and say, well, you know what? I'm kind of feeling those those kind of same struggles on on days that I'm off, and whatever my profession is, whatever it is, whatever it is I'm doing, 
you know, days it just doesn't click. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. I'm not, it doesn't, it doesn't come naturally. And, and dude, that's everybody feels that man. Yeah. Everybody feels that. Sure. Um, that's just the way it works. I want to talk to you about something you mentioned earlier that you, re that you talked about on your, your, you said on your first episode that you recorded, I've been kicking this around in my mind, dude, for quite a while. And the question is, does success make you soft? Does success make you soft? And I think it's a conversation. I don't think it's a, because when, when initially I want to say yes, initially financial success or yeah, 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 fine, fine. Yeah. I, I mean, yes, yeah, success in, in terms of you have achieved some things in your life and you've reached a point to where, you know, you're, you're pretty much good to go. You got you got everything that yeah. you that you need. Your basic needs are all met. You you even got a little extra. Does that make you soft? I mean, what what's your what's your thought on that before we everybody's dig into got this? everybody's got so many different de definitions of what success means. Yeah. And like and what money means. Like for me, I've never been a, a materialistic person. Like I like the kind of the simpler ways. I, I touched on some of those earlier. That's how I grew up, just simple times. And, um, but at the same time, I, I see, I see what opportunities money, money can bring. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you find a happy medium? Um, you know, money can make things easier. Um, money can create opportunities. Money can, can help other people. Um, but as far as, um, you know, what was the initial question you asked me? Well, I, I'm at, and, and this is a question I ask myself, does success, success make, you, make soft? you soft? Because I, the reason this question came up in my mind is because like, I'm looking at myself at this point in my journey. Yeah. Um, I have, I, I, I have reached what I would call success for my life. All right. And so I'm asking myself, now that I'm in this place, man, that I I literally have there. If if you ask me right now, what's one thing that you want, material thing, or what's one thing that you would change about your life? There's nothing. I I, I, I mean, I'm not bragging. I, I'm just saying that's the yeah. point I'm at in my life. So I'm reflecting. I, I I've been reflecting on myself. It's like this place that I'm in right now. Is it changing me? Is it making me? Is it making me soft? Am, am I not? Am I not really as hungry as I as I used to be? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm I'm trying to assess myself by way of asking me asking myself this question. And I'm trying to work it out in my mind. Yeah, like well, I guess you could like take inventory like somehow of yourself. Like I compare stuff like, and maybe. Maybe I would have done it back then if they had been more prominent because Rome is, Rome is getting pretty known for their car washes, right? we got one in every corner. Yeah, yeah you ain't uh, lying. So it's the car wash wars. So, like, I often beat myself up sometimes for running my, running my truck through a car wash. I'm like, man, I used, to, I used to detail cars, too, when I was, like, 17, so I kind of got burned out with it. So, But why, why am I not whipping out a bucket and some brushes washing my own car, my own driveway, not only would it be some exercise, but it would put me out in nature, put on some good music like that. Just, just sitting right here talking about it makes me feel good. Yeah. But yet success or having the funds or the just disposable income has allowed me to just zip through a car wash, you know, and, and let, let a machine do it for me. Yeah. But these are these change, but these are these changes that I'm talking. That's, this is exactly the type of stuff that yeah. I'm talking about. Well, I, I mean, I think a lot of this will come from uh, like we put more on ourselves than than we can handle. So then, you know, when you do that, you kind of start you should start to make a little bit of money and then you start having to use your money as a resource to buy you time, basically. So instead of yeah. now you can afford a car wash, you don't have to wash your own car. Right. So you say, oh, dang, that was nice. Oh, also, I don't have to go down to 
Chick-fil-A or whatever to get my food. I'm just going to buy a DoorDash. And then it, it starts this chain of events. And then, you know, like anything, you're not just uh, all of a sudden this fat, lazy slob that's paying for convenience throughout all life. You get you you doing that a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Yeah. And then at the end, you're like, holy smokes, I'm not doing anything because now I'm satisfied in life. I feel like I've reached this spot where right. I can kind of, you know, just put it in cruise control and, and let it roll on. I've got money. <clears throat> I don't need I don't need anything. So and I'm you're fine. Right. You said something buying time. And I, I do look at that that value too because you're right in the not sitting here saying i won't ever wash my own vehicle again but in the in the hour that it would take to wash my car say versus going through a car wash i'm 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 zipped back right over to the the smoothie shop working on some other back-end stuff that helps keep that glued together to feed 12 families 12 yep. 12 people that i'm responsible for keeping food on their table yeah, yeah. so it's just like you can look at it that that was that's so a good, different ways. That's a good point. Like, what are you what are you doing? What are you doing with that extra time? Right. Yeah. That you have, uh, because you can now <laughs> afford convenience. Right. Yeah. It'd be, be different if I was like going like paying somebody to wash my car and then just like sitting Scrolling on, couch on Instagram. All day and, yeah. 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 Like not contributing to society like yeah i could see where that would not be good you know something i do a lot of times and i, I didn't really realize i do it until we're talking about this but like if i'm going to uh if i'm going to buy something or pay for some service i think like all right if i just did this myself because in reality i can figure out how to do anything that i want to do i, I think well youtube it, yeah and well, i yeah. and so i say all right if i did this myself about how much time would it take me and i've figure that up and i think all right how much is is say two hours of my time worth and if it's worth me doing it then i do it but if right. i'm like oh man no i could do i could make either more money or have a bigger impact over here with those two hours instead of tying up my time with this then i won't you know then then i won't do it but then sometimes i, I do the yeah. wrong thing like i just remodel the bathroom at that yeah. at our new house because yeah. i didn't want to deal with dang contractors they right. just you know but anyway, so I was like, well, I'll just do it myself. But it took me like three days to do it. And I could have done a lot of stuff for those three days. But, you know, so sometimes I get out of line with it. But that's a lot of times how I'll value my time. I'll say, all right, how much time is this going to take? And is it worth that to me? Or could I have a bigger impact or make more money over here? And plus, there's a the sense of like accomplishment too. Like a lot of times it's, I have to, I'm faced with that same choice. Like, do I? Do I hire somebody to come in and rip this carpet up and put down some yeah. LVP in like eight hours? Because you know that crew can do that. Or yeah. do I never really done it before? Do I get on YouTube and try to try to do it and hope that it looks good? And, yeah. You know, there's no huge gaps in the corners and, you know, like, am I going to be proud of it? Yeah. Um, so, but at the same time, a lot of times when you do take that that leap of faith and do it, you, and you do a good job, you kind of prove to yourself that you can do it and you get some like more confidence. Yeah. You know, I remember one time, um, I, I'm not a mechanic, but the thought of replacing a serpentine belt blew my mind. Like I had one break on, a, on an old Dodge Cummins. And normally I would just ca carry it to my mechanic because I was like, man, there's just, I got on YouTube and there's like, you got to loop it through this way and go around this pulley and you got to have a torque bar to take the pressure off. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I was just getting overwhelmed watching it. And uh, he couldn't get to it for like a week. I was like, well, I'm gonna try to do it myself. So I got out there and I had the had my iPad up on the on the thing, and I'd hit pause, and do that step, yep, play it, hit pause, and man, in like less than three minutes, I had that thing replaced. Yeah. So, so I'm all about doing stuff in yourself and for that aspect because it was it was a, a lot of times I think people don't realize they're capable of doing more than what they can they yeah. can do. You know, for sure. Um, now have you, so you're running multiple businesses now. I'm just looking up Spartan smoothie. You've got the Y Drake in town. Well, let me say this co-owner, what attract, what, so I've known Keith for a little while, just from going in Spartan smoothie and we've talked, you know, spent time, but what I've always thought was cool about you, Keith, is that like you, you just take these steps 
you just start these bits like you know you told me about your car washing business and i know you had the stump grinding business and then you're talking about the sauna cold plunge the podcast spartan smoothie wide dry yeah. and you got all of these things that you've either started and sold or going simultaneously and i think well I'd, i've seen people try to do that before but they all fall apart and you've been consistent with like your podcast, man, the video and audio quality is probably better than, <laughs> than what we've got. And, and, and so I just say like that all the things you do, they're all up to a really high standard and you're consistent with it. And so that was, I mean, I just think that that's unique about you. Um, it's, it's an admirable that, that you're able to do that. So I just preface what you're about, you know, all the stuff yeah. he's doing. That was initially really what, yeah. Drew me to Keith well, and made him different. I, I agree. I, I agree. Like you walk into Spartan Smoothies, it's a good experience and it's a good product. Yeah. And it's set up good. It's branded well. It's 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 ran professionally, um, which is a unique experience when <laughs> nowadays, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh I, I I'm bringing this back to the conversation that we're having and the fact that you do you you have these established businesses within our community you have uh you are a presence in our community everybody everyone knows you um pr more so than everyone knows me and blake like you're you're very well known you're established you have multiple employees you have successful businesses in town and you're you're at the that place in your life and going back to this conversation does success make you soft i think i think the soft part to me, for me personally, doesn't come down to am I, has success made me necessarily lazy to where I'm avoiding manual labor type tasks. Right. It's more, it more for me revolves around am I like checking myself, like, am I still freaking hungry, man? Like, have you, have in your journey now that you've reached this place where you have stood up these brands and businesses and and you, you these things are stood up they're running they're functioning like are you still hungry and and how do you if you are how have you stayed hungry to get, keep well, I going think, i think that's a double-edged sword because that's that's kind of been in like a i'm not even sure of the word man like i, I think I, sometimes i have a problem because like i've Sometimes I just want to be a little bit more normal. I'm the black sheep of the family. Uh, didn't do well in school. I tried to quit school. I wanted to be out working. Like I said, I had a car detailing business at 16, 17 years old. I'd leave and go and wash cars at doctor's offices and make more money than the, the teachers were making just in a few hours detailing cars. I, I already knew basic math. I thought it was a waste of time to learn about Abraham's wooden teeth. So yeah. I just want to be out working. and. Um, but no, I mean it's it's a uh, it's an obsession, whether it's toxic or not. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. But I I stay hungry. That's not a problem for me. Sometimes I think it's I need to tone it down a notch, come back to earth. That's my problem. I have to constantly keep it in check. Here's all this hunger. Here's all this success. All right. Well, what about what about your relationships? You know, what about your family? Mm -hmm. You know, are you keeping all that? balance so it's a constant tug of war with me personally minor tug of war and demons that i have to fight daily and weekly yes i'm hungry for business yes i, I want to pour into my my businesses and make them successful and what's the next big thing or whatever next idea but hey what about my grandmother i hadn't called her in a week yeah you know what about my mom i hadn't did breakfast with why not shoot my sisters a text and say hey how you doing how's your shop doing so it's stuff like that i'm constantly beating myself up about and my girlfriend she says i'm too hard on myself because she thinks that i put this pressure on myself to be this brother of the year and uncle of the year and son of the year and boss of the year person so it's a lot of pressure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no that's a that's a good that's a good point because i i think like i very much so relate to this um because I feel like this, I feel the same as you just described. Like I'm, I'm still hungry too, yeah. to the point that like this year I've done harder things this year in terms of my own physical fitness 
journey and endeavors than I've ever done in the past. I ran a freaking 250 mile race. I did a 370 mile bike ride across the state of Georgia. Like, uh, in, in, in terms of work, we've worked harder this year at three to seven project than any other year. Yeah. Um, and so my actions, I think prove that yes, I'm still hungry. So I went through that assessment in my own life when I asked myself this question, like, are my, are my, do my actions show that I'm still hungry, that I'm still desiring to push, that I'm still desiring to grow? And when I asked myself that question and I reflected back upon what we have accomplished this year, both professionally and personally, <clears throat> the answer is yes. Okay. Now I, now I can, Okay. Okay. I'm good. I don't, I don't ever want, I don't ever want to become complacent, which I think when we, when, when, you know, that's another side trail on this. I think success breeds complacency and the complacency is what actually makes you soft yeah. or makes you, makes you to where you, you no longer have the desire to, uh, to continuously grow. Now, a lot of people would say that that desire to continuously push, to continuously grow, to continuously reinvent yourself or create or push your boundaries. A lot of people do look at that as extremely destructive. And I think the reason people look at that as extremely destructive is because it's the totally opposite. It's the opposite of what they think they would do if they were in your shoes. Right. Um, and, and it's the opposite of what most people do when they're, when, when, you know, if you look on their life, you, right. you, you look at people, people talk about, um, Navy SEAL training buds that can be a curse, right? Because here's what the large majority, 98% of guys that make it through SEAL training, they they put that achievement on a pedestal and they think, I'll never do anything greater than that. And so many of them, they never reemerge after their career in the Navy's over to do anything magnificent or extremely difficult ever again all their all their eggs are in that one basket yeah yeah it's like it's like when you do experience this high this success or this high achievement like it gives you an excuse to just rest on your laurels because of that thing it breeds complacency but but that's not the way i tick man no and you you brought it up in one of your podcasts last three or four you your exact words were you feel like I think it was Nick Bears. You you feel like you've accomplished more post military than what you did in military. Yeah, for sure. And not and not to disrespect what the military gave you, but just from a personal standpoint, you feel like you've accomplished more. I do a hundred percent. I do. Yeah. I I have I have more fulfillment. I've experienced more pain. Definitely made more money. Uh, all of those things. Yeah, it just can. Yeah. But but people are like, I, I know, I mean, I, I know people in general, especially in this place where we live or people, and I, I even mean family members, uh, I mean, they look at you and they're like, what the crap's wrong with you? Like, why are, what, why are you running a 250 mile race? That's stupid. Like, didn't you just run a hundred mile race? Like, uh. Or why are you why are you walking away from a, a career with a four hundred one k to go grind stumps? Yeah, man, the the, the 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 lash back I got from the family on that one, you know, just all the doubt. Yeah, man, for a lot of my craziness. Yeah, so people look at it as like just because because it's so counter. I don't know if it's cultural or, or, or counter society. human nature. Uh, yeah, man. Like I said, I've never been this concept of retirement. Yeah, it, the mm. our society is inundated 
with this concept of retirement. My grandma asked me, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple months back. She said, well, Blake, are you putting money back for retirement? And I said, What's no, that? Granny, I'm not. Yes. I said, I said, I'm basically retired right now. I said, I, I, if, if I was re- you know, quote unquote right. retired, I wouldn't be doing anything differently than I'm doing now. I'm, I'm fulfilling my purpose. I'm fulfilled in, in what I think I'm doing, what I should be doing. And no, I'm not putting money back for retirement. No. Uh, what is this thing? <laughs> and, my, and my dad, bless his heart, he's, uh, we talk every day. We talk mostly business stuff. And he's, 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 he's that old school generation, which, you know, how he grew up and this is how he was raised, you know, just pinch your pennies. If you can, if you can do it yourself, do it regardless of how much time mm-hmm. he definitely puts more value on the dollar than he does his time. Mm-hmm. He's 65. He, he, he busted his butt for the man for 40 years just so he, he could just now at 65 retire. And, you know, he's got the, the picture perfect 401k and all that stuff. But yeah, he, he tends to kind of push that on me a lot and he'll bring it up from time to time. And he knows, he knows I got different, different beliefs and, uh, same thing, man. You know, it's, it's, yep. I've never done anything normal you know, with anything in my life. I've always been the black sheep of the family. Uh, didn't go to really college. I didn't get married young. I didn't, I don't, I don't watch a lot of sports. I'm not grilling out and watching football games, yelling <laughs> at TVs every weekend. Jeez. And it's just, I don't, I'm just different, man. Yeah, I don't, this, the the whole, I don't understand how the, the idea of working your entire life at a job that does not fulfill you for the sake of the potential opportunity to retire, I, I don't understand how that became such a deep-rooted um concept well you know what happens when 90 percent of people retire they die they die about six months into it six months in, they quit doing anything they sit at home they get depressed and they die yeah boy work 40 years so you can spend six months depressed and die i don't i I think it's i think though like the the this whole idea of retirement i think the the perspective on it is beginning to shift at least for a small percentage of people who who are i I think we're starting to kind of see through that whole ideal as being something that's legitimate go go ahead you said something a while ago and I've, i've 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 dissected this same topic many times if a person is working a job they truly hate i have a problem with that but i have met people I have met personally met people inside the smoothie shop. Even when I was out stump grinding, met some of the most joyful, thankful, happy people that like work factory jobs. Yeah, but but they are just th- their mind's not even there. Like when they're there working, they're do- they're working, they're doing a great job running that machine. But they may may not have a, their their AirPods in, listen to listen to preaching. They're just joyful. They get home and spend time with their family. They're that's that's different now. If you're if you're if you're truly a person that you're just you're just miserable at what you're doing, that's a problem. You need to try to find find a way to get out. Yeah. So I, I think it takes every person to, to make this world run. We need we need factory workers. We need people to work a nine to five. But if you're hating it, that's 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 where I I see a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. Miles Monroe said one time that uh, America trains people up to be employed and not deployed and i thought man that's that's pretty good because no i agree that that's what the school system does a terrible job like you know like i think definitely if you talk to any any teacher right now most most males graduating don't even know how to change a spare tire or check a battery or jump a car off or or manage their or manage their checkbook checkbook financials like i agree that 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 we could we could branch off on a whole nother episode on that but um but yeah it's 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 definitely twisted. Yeah. I, and I think the whole, I think the root of this is starting something like going down a path simply to achieve some end result in the distant future is a bad path to yeah. go down. Like yeah. whatever it is that you're doing. Ultimately, 
You should be able to picture yourself doing it until the day that you freaking die. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Or or doing it for free, you know? Yeah. Because essentially that's what it takes for a while. I mean, I know the smoothie shop. You know, I didn't I didn't pay myself one penny for the first two years after taking over that that spot because yep. I, I wasn't the one that bring it to Rome. I, I took over ownership. I was, I was just a loyal customer. Mm -hmm. Caught him on a bad day. His ice machine that went out and somebody had called in seat and he's like, he's like, I'd, I'd give this place away. Somebody made me a decent offer on it. I was like, Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll call you later. Anyway, long story short, took it over. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot of times where I joked around with the employees saying, you you guys make more money than I make. And they did. Yeah. Yeah. First two years, but I truly loved it. I love what I was doing. I love building and creating and, 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 and helping people, you know, yeah, hundred percent. And that that you're right. That so, has to happen. You're gonna have to do it for free. Yeah. For for a long, long time. I did the same thing. Yeah, I think the key with everything we've talked about here is like I just keep thinking of the word relentless. Like you just have to constantly be pushing the boundaries of in your in your in your spiritual life, you know, body, soul, and spirit. Everything that we do, you have to always be pushing the boundaries. And that's why people say, Oh, what are you doing this for, Chad? You dummy, what are you running this this long race for? And you know, just breaking your body down. But, you know, maybe it is breaking the body down a little bit, but it's building other things. You know, it's building your your soul and your spirit. I mean, for me it it does. And so, you know, you do and things yeah. relentlessly. It, at a rate that you could sustain them all your life. And and there should never be a point. I don't ever want to get to a point where I say I'm retired, like where you can just kick back because I mean, at that point you might as well be dead. I think that's probably why you die so soon because you basically are dead. Yeah. When you just sit around and do nothing, you have no purpose, no mission. You you're dead. And I, and you're right. It's like in all angles too. Like I feel like a lot of times I'll, I'll forget. Hey, it's been, it's been a minute since you challenged yourself physically, you know, and that's when I'll, I'll go visit. What's his name? Hamza. Hamza. Oh yeah. Over there yeah. on a Sunday and he'll put me through a workout and boy, oh, he did. Oh he did yeah. A few weeks ago. I couldn't, it was one of those, couldn't sit on the toilet for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me like, okay, I can still do some stuff that, that I didn't think was possible physically, even though I'm bumping 40. So, yep. and same thing with running, you know, I've never considered myself a runner, but I know why you guys do it because that's got to be just a it's, running is just one of those things where it's simple, but it's so it's not easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're talking about putting, putting in miles, man. I mean, that's the beauty of running. Yeah. It's the same, this, the fact that it is so simple, but it is so freaking hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to, I want to bring it back though, to what you said earlier of, Try uh, of being conscious though of of the gift that we have in terms of the mindset that we have to that that we're we 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 don't lose that hunger we don't lose that desire to to grow and to expand and to to do the things that we do, but that also it being a great gift can become extremely destructive because I, what you described earlier. So my work, I tell my wife all the time, my work is my life. Like yeah. there are no hours. <laughs> like I, I might be, I might be sitting in front of my laptop doing something at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Right. Like there is no lunch break. There are no hours. There are no weekends. There are no holidays. No. My work is my life because my work is my mission. Yeah. And you enjoy it. You know? Yeah. And I, and I enjoy it, but I see the same thing that you just called out a little bit ago because my work is my life. There will be long periods of time that go by that I, I don't think about relationships. I don't think about calling someone. I don't think about doing something, you know, setting aside that time for, for my wife and doing something nice for, I, I'm just being straight up with you guys. So it's, it can uh, become extremely destructive. So how do you stay aware of that, man? I literally, man, this is crazy. 
you bring this up. It got it got so tangled in my mind, and I was just having a, I was getting tired of the, the the mental fatigue of the tug of war. I was playing the guilt. I was like, I got to find some way to organize this and have a visual. So I literally got on like Microsoft Word and just titled it Keith's Thinking Log, and I just got different different categories. Okay, Spartan, Wydrate, uh, pit, uh, Fitness. Uh, family, personal goals. And I literally, that's what I do. That's kind of my journaling. So I just, as it's fresh on my mind, hey, it's been a minute since I called my grandmother, I'll write that down and just make sure I execute that, you know, within within the week or the mm. next few days, scratch it out. So I kind of keep it all. That's just my way of kind of journaling and keeping it more where it makes sense in my mind. So you got intentional. Yes. You got You got intentional about, about, yeah about you know you you say i i hate to call it balance because it's never going to be balanced no, because I, I of, agree. because of your nature i agree that's but, anybody that's created any kind of a success or empire whatever you want to call it um you ask them how balanced their life was you think elon musk's life's balanced you think steve jobs life was balanced do you think keep naming them do you think their you think their lives balanced no, no. So, but at the same time, I don't want to be a freaking just uh, person that, and my mom don't, she, she, my sisters would never think that I don't care, but I think it's more pressure I put on myself to try to be a better brother. Yeah. Well, if you don't try, you're going to swing real hard one way. So yeah. the goal is like in everything and, you know, uh, something you're training for or any, any area is to be on that, to walk that pinnacle, that ride, that knife's razor's yeah. edge. But it's so fine. You're going to slide off a little bit on one side or the other. Yes. But if you don't care, you'll wind up at the bottom of the blade on just getting stuff done and everything else will be. And I know you can relate to this because I'm mean, I, I'm at the smoothie shop a lot and it's like on Fridays, you know, how many people come in and say, you know, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. I'm like, what does that even mean to me? Yeah. Like, it's just another day. Or Monday comes around, you know, it's Monday. I'm like, but that's your that's your mainstream working in a cubicle, hate their job. People yep. that, that, that live for the weekend, you know, yeah. the, the Georgia Bulldogs and yep. beer. Yeah. Freedom for a couple of days. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that the fact that you even feel like you feel that pressure. Uh, you and and you could even call it tension. You feel that tension within yourself of like, man, this is the way I'm wired, and I really love going hard, you know, in this direction of growth and in this direction of physical fitness, in this direction of business. But you just naturally feel this tension of like, all right, I understand this about myself, but I also have to. I, I know that this other part of life, which is an important part of life, which is your relationships and your community and your friendships and things like, I know those things are suffering. I think the fact that you are even able to naturally feel that is just a testament to the type of person that you are. That's what, that's what my girlfriend reminds me of. She is just, just the fact that you even have those uh, awareness. Yes. is huge. So you need to give yourself some credit there. Yes. The, and the, the, re the real problem occurs when you no longer have that awareness. Right. Right. That would be like, um, that would relate to what the Bible calls a reprobate mind. Like, if you do reach the point where you just go all the way in to this side of you that's so driven in the directions that you're going that you no longer feel any tension, yep. uh, that is when you're in big trouble. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's where you're in big trouble, man. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. This is a great conversation. It's it's just a... I, I think it's... Um, I, I, I asked... I just, like I say, I asked this question to, to one, assess myself and where I'm at. And I, I asked this question also in, uh, in order to contradict a lot of what is portrayed in the social media space. Because so much of what 
so much of what is portrayed is just this simple message of like stay hard, yep. stay hungry. Like it but it's it's so much more complex than that, man. It is. It's so it's 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 a conversation. It is not just that. It's so much more complex than that. And I I think too that a lot of people will um some people will even like hamstring themselves or be embarrassed of their of success that they have achieved. Uh maybe they won't take any they won't they won't take any like gratitude or they won't celebrate any any success that they have achieved because they're afraid that it's going to make them freaking yeah. get soft, man. Because for, for a lot of people, we have this example of, of them achieving success, them becoming complacent, and then just becoming a fat, lazy turd and not yeah. doing anything else. And a lot of people are afraid of that. So it's like, but no, you don't, you don't have to be afraid of achieving things. You don't have yeah. to be afraid of celebrating the fact that you freaking – ran your first hundred mile race. You ran your first two, 200 mile race. You, you did, you, you, you made your first million dollars. You, you yeah. celebrate that freaking crap, man. Show it, show it to people, man. Like that's why, that's why I'm so, I'm, I want to be open as I progress in my journey. I want to be open with the blessings that I have the things that I have, the achievements that I'm proud of, I want to be open with those. Like, I don't want to hide them from people because the reason I want to be open with that is so that hopefully some freaking 18-year-old kid out there is like, dang, man. Yeah. Look at look at where Chad, I look up to Chad. Maybe you look up to Chad. Look at where Chad's at. There, There ain't nothing special about this freaking dude, man. Like I, I got everything Chad has, which that's true. If you're listening to this, you got everything. I don't have any special smartness or any. There, there's nothing special about me. But I want to, I want to show these things so that somebody might say, "Heck yeah, man! Yeah, freaking work hard. If I stay hungry, if I just keep going, I can have those things too." Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I agree, man. I I mean, that's why I that's why I'm I'm so open about. I, I when I say a lot of times I say when I say things like I have everything in life that I could possibly I actually have more in my life than I could have ever imagined having. If you would have asked me 20 years ago, if you'd have said, "Tell me exactly what you want." Yeah. And I would have described it to you. Now I have more beyond what my what my what I could even perceive, um, and like that's not to be boastful. That's to freaking show you, man. If you will just keep going, like your imagination cannot even conceptualize right. what is potentially available for you and in this life. Most of that is not in uh, material things, would you say? No, like, no. Because I think it, a lot of people hear that and they think like, oh, Chad's talking about he's got the place he wants to live, the vehicle, and, and some of those things you do have, some, but it's that's not like what you're getting at. It's, it's, it's across the board. Where you're at mentally, physically, relationally, all of those things. That, that's what makes you happy because yeah. I think people could look and say, oh, I want what Chad has, <clears throat> and so I'm going to do the things he did so that I can get those things. Right. And well, that's not going to work out for you because you're not meant to be Chad. Chad's meant to be Chad. Keith's meant to be Keith and Blake's meant to be Blake and you are meant to be you. And so, yeah, you the principles apply, but it's going to get you a different place than it's gotten everybody else in the world. Right. But you can have that, um, you know, I, I guess maybe you would say satisfaction, but but not content or complacent, but satisfaction with, confidence with who you are with what you have and your abilities now, I, I just want people to understand yeah. that now you could have you could have made things a lot more complicated you you could have went in debt up to your eyeballs 
on a on a huge house and a boat, RVs and finance the four wheelers and oh yeah, brand new trucks. But you didn't. My question to you is: Is that how you were raised? Why didn't Why didn't you? Because a lot of people do when they first start getting that that taste of success. Mm-hmm. Why not get the six hundred thousand dollar house? Why not finance the the RV? Because so spend family time together. That's a easy, that's a totally easy answer for me because I've my my focus has always been mission. It's always been mission focused. It's never been thing focused. My so like yeah, uh, definitely. I I could I could go I could go out right now and buy pretty much anything yeah. I wanted to buy. Yeah. Um, but. I don't do it and I haven't done it because all I'm interested in really materially is my basic needs. And then my focus is just mission focused all always. And, and the interesting thing about that is if you can maintain that mission focus on what it is you're actually doing and making the, making yourself and making the things that you're doing the best that they can possibly be. Yeah. All the all the material stuff just becomes this just this ancillary part of it. You know, that you that you it's just it's just there. Yeah, and that's like I said earlier in the episode, I've never been hung up on material things, but I do I am striving for a place in my life where I'm doing what I love on a daily. It's not work, but but stuff financially is just it's just getting taken care of you know yeah. it's like you know the house payments getting taken care of i don't really know what's coming out it's yeah that, that's the piece i love yep. that feeling like no i'm not going and buying a ferrari i'm not buying a boat but all my necessities <clears throat> if i want to buy you know 300 dollars on a random th- thursday i can it's not going to set me yep. back you know i have to really wa- worry about it uh i ain't got to worry about pinching some pennies one month to pay the power bill or the gas bill, you know, stuff like that. Just yep. peace, just peace. Knowing yep. that here's, here's my playground. As long as I'm playing in it, everything's getting taken care of. And I'm doing what I love. Yeah. Um, you know, and that, that's interesting how you kind of talk about that because Chow's was talking about the success creates softness. And then, you know, you kind of start to think that success, if it's, especially if it's financial, um, can, can also, detract from your really your relationship with god because then you depend on him you think that all right i have this money and i'm taking care of these bills and i'm taking care of this and i don't you know there's your dependency lessons on on really on god for for meeting your needs and so you know like what you're talking about you can really have that in my opinion someone might argue with me but in my opinion you could have that before you actually have the means to do it because if you are living a life just based off of having what you need with no extra. God tells us that he will meet that need. And yeah, if you have the faith to believe that, then, then you can live that peaceful financial life. Like you're talking about without out actually having the money. And I truly believe that. And that I live my life that way. Um, and so it was just interesting that you brought that up, yeah. you know, financially. And I think that kind of relates to yeah, the, sure, to the success and, and compl- complacency. Yeah. I've, I've thought about that too. And if you can't tell, this is a topic that I've been thinking on for like the last couple of weeks, really. And I wanted to fit this into a truck talk, but I was like, no, this ain't a truck talk. Like this ain't a five minute thing right um and for me blake that that aspect comes with uh i think it ties into whole my my whole philosophy as living like in your mind like living in your mind as if you as if you really don't have or own or possess anything right all these things are just like resources and tools that that further the mission. That's why I look at everything just as a little tool or a little resource to further the mission. And whether that's making me better for the mission or whether it's actually making or, or empowering the, the mission, you know, tangibly, it's like they both play hand in hand. And that's the way I look at all, 
all the material things. Yeah. Now, how to how you get into that mindset, I have no idea how to tell you to do that. But um, but yeah, that's I don't know. I've thought about that aspect of it too. What what is, what is your mission, Chad? Like what what is your <laughs> and I'm kind of just randomly yeah. asking you that, but like I, I'm you know, I've known Blake. I watch you guys from a distance, but I, I don't I still, I still don't know if I know and understand all the moving parts to what, to what you do and you're about. Yeah. I think my personal mission would be to, to inspire people, uh, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, um, through intentional, uh, activity, right? Like intentional, purposeful things that I'm doing in my life and, and portraying those things or, or speaking those things or articulating those things to hopefully inspire every, everyone who listens, watches, hears, views, it whatever. Does, it does inspire because, um, when you go for a, what do you, what do you just run a hundred miles? I just ran a hundred. I just ran a hundred mile race in September. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, I know, I just know, and maybe the ever per, everyday person don't, but I know that that, that's a little more involved than just physical with that. There's some major spiritual stuff going on yeah. to accomplish a hundred mile race. And the whole, for me, the whole purpose of wanting to inspire people is for, it's all for the sake of hope. So when I say the word inspire, what I mean is to provide hope for people. I like, like that word. Inspire them to to people, to have something to hope for, something more to hope well, for. Yeah, because you're like me. You see so many people just in their in their life where they're just stagnant and stuck, and there's no hope. Yep. Depending on who they're hanging around or what they're watching, um, I see guys all the time coming in, in the shop in their thirties that's just beat down. You yep. know, In a terrible marriage, they're they're drinking every night. They're a hundred pounds overweight, and they're just so used to feeling like crap. They think that's normal. I'm like. There's no way just, out of it. I just want to shake them a bit. Yeah. Like, dude, you know, you can thrive. You don't, it don't have to be, you don't have to stay this way. Yep. Yeah. So when I, when I wrote my, when I wrote out my mission statement and I thought about like, what is the one thing that, that bothers me the most about what I see in my family, in my community, in the world? What is the one thing that keeps me up at night? It is the hopelessness of so many people. So many people are in a place physically that they feel there's no way out. They're on their like they're on their blood pressure medicine. They're on their diabetes medicine. They're freaking fat. They can't move. They their can't eighteenth Rona shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And it's like they 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 think there's no way out of that. Okay. Same mentally, they're depressed. They they're insecure. They they feel like they uh, they they they're maybe they feel like they're dumb or they 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 don't have anything to offer or whatever. Like they and there's no hope for them out of that out of that situation mentally. And the same spiritually, yeah. they don't understand the Bible. They don't they don't understand. Christ, they don't understand this 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 faith thing that they see us having. They don't think there's any way out of that, and they're 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 freaking hopeless. I mean, that's where the ultimate hopelessness resides is in the lack of faith, because we all know we're dying soon. Um, so for me, yeah, with, like when I wrote my mission statement, that when I say inspire others, it's 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 that to me means is to per spark some hope for someone that no matter what the crap, where I'm at physically, where I'm at mentally, where I'm at spiritually, there is hope for something better, but it's going to require some action on my behalf. Yeah. And that's, that's why I'm so passionate about using the vehicle of fitness and nutrition to, to give people hope. You know, I, I bring up one guy comes to, comes to my mind I'd, I'd circle back with him every like six months. He'd be in the same spot, just, just crying about the same things. You know, he's, he's trying to lose weight and he's still in a bad relationship. And it's, he, they got let go of his job and he can't afford it right now to, to hire me. And I'd circle back with him a year later. Same old, same old, same old blues. Man, I, I think this went on for like a decade, bro. 
And finally, I just, you know, I grew up in a, a house where you didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And finally, I just called him out. I was like, I just was real stern with him in the inbox. Mm -hmm. and just said, look, man, wherever you go, there you are. You know, like, it's, I think if you, if you, don't you think if you just kind of, we focused on you, that that would might affect all the other areas in your life, you know, like, let's, because he's, he's trying to like put out fires everywhere else, but then not the internal itself. So yep, yep. it resonated with him and he, he, he put, he put, put it on a credit card and did three months with me and he's, he's down like 60 pounds and it's, it's, it's spilling over into other areas of his life. Right. You can see that, you know, it's, he's, he's become a little bit more efficient employee because he's now lighter on his feet. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got more confidence. His marriage is getting better. So that's why I'm real big on the, on the vehicle of fitness because it's one thing you can't, you can't buy it. Nobody else can do it for you, but the reward you get for kind of honing in on that is it can tenfold in all areas of your life. Yep. Yep. And that leads me into my question for you, Keith, is like when obviously you're super passionate about your personal fitness, your personal diet. I mean, your businesses uh, definitely represent that your, your own physical self, like you're, you're a, you are a, fit dude like when i first came up here in the driveway and I, I haven't seen you in a while and i see you and i'm like man this joker is freaking strong man like you don't just get that way by just kind of piddling around right yeah um when did you realize that that was gonna be a big part of your life and like ha when did that become super important to you 16 years old i was at, a, at my first like party you know, teenager party, bonfire, girls. And like I said, I grew up kind of sheltered. Probably I knew I shouldn't, shouldn't be at that party, but I, I noticed something pretty quick that the girls wasn't hanging around me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I learned then that the world is mean. They judge you. I was 270 pounds acne and uh, I grew up around my dad working out. So um, I had just made up my mind right then. I was going to fix it. So you were 270 at 16? 260, 270. Wow. Acne. Yeah. And, you know, it was just, just at that point, just, I remember eating a, eating a whole box of Fruity Pebbles most mornings uh, in front of wow. the kitchen TV watching Saved by the Bell. That's, that was most of my mornings and just sedentary. And yeah, 260, 270. Mm -hmm. And um, started working out with my dad's weights out in his old shack out back eight track player, Steve Miller band. <laughs> yeah. And started shedding off the weight. And I saw what, I saw what that did for me personally, as far as confidence and obviously health and longevity and opportunities. Um, we don't have enough time to go down the whole list of opportunities that, that, that presented, but, uh, I got, I got picked up by a nutrition company at like 19 years old and they sponsored me for, for about two years and flew me all over the country. And it just was awesome experience meeting mm -hmm. people and just seeing people that that read my my uh, meal hacks and diet articles in the magazines back when people used to read magazines in the early 2000s mm -hmm. talking about how that was you know changed their life and stuff like that that's when i knew that i wanted fitness you know i was i was bought in and i was going to use that as a vehicle to not only keep myself on track but help others mm -hmm. So it's kind of a nutshell version. Yeah, no, I love that, man. I love that. Um, it's it's funny to me too, man, to like to really I think to really become super passionate about anything, like you have to you have to experience both sides of it. Like being completely the people who are most passionate about fitness and health are the people who have spent a time had a, had a period of their life where they were just a complete freaking wreck, dude. Just unhealthy, overweight. Yeah. Um. Y'all think I'm passionate about fitness? I I am not passionate about fitness in comparison because I I I've never had a time in my life where I experienced what it was like to be unhealthy and overweight, and when you live a life to where you're able to see both sides of it, you become way, way, way more passionate about it. 
and not only both sides, but in the middle, because yeah, man, I tell people all the time, you know, I'm a lot, a lot, a lot has happened from ages sixteen to forty. You know, marriages, uh, weight gain, complacency. Like there was times where I had to look at myself in the mirror and get my shit together. Mm -hmm. Well, even just recently, you you made a big tran transition in in your your physical body. I mean, yeah. as long as I've known you, you've always looked like you were in shape. But I remember you posted some picture not long back, yeah. and and the and the transformation that you went through just what this year, like yeah. I and mean, that was and I, need, and I need to do a better job of shining some light in that area because I, I t people, I think that's the problem with the fitness industry is people are always putting out the flawless side of it and it's not flawless like some of the most you, your most um, dedicated gym rats have have nights where they binge eat you know ice cream or chips i have them um we're not we're not perfect but yeah we don't post none of that yeah yeah that's that's the truth man so it's uh i think it's a great point to bring up because a lot of people I think I, one, the thing that I'm probably most passionate about life is, is is my faith. And the reason I'm so passionate about Christ and my faith and why I'm so outspoken about it and why it's, so, it's such a big part of me and the, the things I talk about and the things I dwell on is because I've seen both sides. I've, I've lived a life where I was just a straight up, just a straight, up heathen son you didn't grow up in church like you know we every time the doors were open you were there as no. a kid from a baby you, 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 that wasn't that wasn't your no up. no I, it's like i i you're exposed in if you grow up in the south you're exposed to church you're exposed to the gospel there were periods of time in our life when we were kids where we would attend a church meeting on a regular basis but it, it was always just kind of it was I don't know, looking back on it, it was it was wishy-washy. And and then when I got to the age where I could make my own decisions and start doing my own thing, I just went hard onto the heathen side, son. That's a similar story. I was I was in church every time the doors were open from a baby. I mean, Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings. This is Baptist church, little maybe maybe a hundred people on Sunday morning, small, you know. And all the way up until my teenage years, up until I started driving. And then, um, you know, I haven't really been back involved with, you know, the modern church since, since then. Um, I don't know if I got, I, I will say there was some, some things that happened that I started recognizing things as I got older that I didn't, I didn't feel was right as far as, um, some 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 churches being a little bit too uh, commercialized, um, and I just don't know if I just have got, I got kind of scarred or burned from some stuff that happened. But I maybe one of these days I'll get plugged back in with a daily trip to the building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, and that's the, and that's not and that's not required because people ask us. Uh, I mean, people ask me all the time. Yeah, come visit it's us. Like, come, come, come. Yeah. Well, and and people ask me all the time, like what what church do you go to? And, and then when I tell them, like, I don't, I don't really, I don't attend a local congregation. And, and then I actually have people even try to shame me for that. Yeah. And, and I'm like, and that's how my family is. Yeah. It's like, well, we'll know what it is, is we have gotten our, our perception of what the church is completely out of whack the the church here on earth is the body of christ that is spread across the entire earth it's not a building now should should believers in christ meet together yeah we should meet together yeah we should meet together we do that every sunday night right we do on on resurrected we do that every sunday night we come together as believers to discuss god's word to pray together to um to to have co conversation both ways and uh uh, I'm not. I'm not anti-congregation. No. I, I'm. I. But I. I do think we've skewed our perspective on what the word church actually means. Church. Church is 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 the body of believers. It. it you can't go to it. You can't go. It. 
you can't go to something that is like it just it is it's alive it's a living organism spread across the face of the earth it's not a place where we go you yeah. know you know how you mentioned earlier that you you pointed out that it's probably it's probably a a uh, good quality to, to even have i have that awareness to know that i need to be a better brother or a mom or, or a son same thing with the spiritual side like like i have that awareness to know when i need to lean into that and it doesn't require me to go to a four wall building every sunday and put money in a plate put the, to put a check mark in that box yeah yeah i, I think the value to me in this part of the conversation is in terms of having the life experience having the experience of life where you got to experience both sides of things like whether that's in your fitness your faith uh even in your your financial life how much more do you appreciate <laughs> getting to that point where you have some extra well, if yeah. you, if you live through a period yeah. of your life where it was like you you didn't have any extra none man it was just four years ago i was pawning my truck title yep it, because i had i had just emptied my piggy bank to to put a down payment on ownership of spartan knowing i wouldn't be able to make a penny for years it was slow season for stump grinding and i still had to pay my guy and pay the, the loan payment on the machine so off to the the title pawn we go yep yep and so i think what happens is we uh once we want if it's if it's physical right and we we've lived a life where we experienced like you have both sides being 270 pounds with acne at age 16 to now being a physical specimen i think what can happen is is there we can just try to like in our own minds like bury that other side that that of our lives or or our or that time of our lives where we we didn't have any faith and we were just straight up freaking heathens or we were fattening out of shape or we were struggling to to just to just pay for our basic necessities or we made bad financial decisions and got ourselves in a hole yeah. like we can try to bury the memory of of those times and it, instead of like appreciating them for what they are like it's those times that allow you to enjoy and really be passionate about and really be thankful for the times that you're experiencing now. So I think we can either try to bury those or we can or or we can still try to carry around the shame that you know is caused by the time when we were fat, the time when we were stupid, the time when we were heathens. Like we can try to carry around that shame. It's like, no, man. The hard crap that you've been through, the hard crap, the stupid stuff you've done, all that stuff, that stuff is, you should be thankful for those times because that, those times, it, give, it gives contrast, right? It contrasts things. And it gives, and I think a good a good title for this episode could be really hope. You, we could, the word hope comes up a lot. Like it being that we've been through all that, it gives us hope for when we do encounter other other hardships, whether yep. it's relationships, financially, business wise. So, and that's why I think me and you, we 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 have we've encountered that hope, and we we see that in other people, but they don't yet. Yep. And we just want to. Like I said, I used to, I keep saying visual shaking people say, man, you know, they don't, it can be, it can be better. This, and that's the truth. This ain't life, man. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Just getting them to see what's true. Yeah. Like the word hope. Yeah. Like I, if I had to dump it into one word, that, that's why I do what I do is I, I want people to have hope that of being able to achieve a higher quality of life mentally physically spiritually physically all that stuff yep yep good stuff man i want to ask you here keith um while we have you on because i know you you are you have really studied and, and honed in on um both the dot the nutrition and also the uh the physical uh part and that's such a big part of your mission 
I just want to ask you, like, simply what advice would you give to people who are right now the 16-year-old version of yourself? And maybe they're 40 or maybe they're 50, but they're, they're overweight. They don't have the confidence they want. They, they're not able to do the things they want. Like, like, what advice would you give them on, like, how do they even start that journey, man? Biggest thing is just starting. Because so many people will, they either don't start because there's people that literally won't join a gym until they, they lose a certain amount of weight. It's sad. Mm. I see that a lot. All right, that comes up a lot. Do you really? People will not. They think they've got to lose 40 or 50 pounds before they can even go be accepted by the general public at a gym. Man. There, there's so much pressure on themselves. See, I don't see that yeah. I, I, because I'm not in the space you're in. You yeah. Know? So, and I get it. So if that's you, then just, just move the, the body is meant to move. So easiest thing is, is, is walking. So, you know, get you a cheap Fitbit and, you know, track how much movement you're getting in per day. Every human, if you're capable, should be getting in 7,500 steps per day, minimum, absolute minimum, because there's a lot of people that I work with, believe it or not. These people are 300 plus pounds. They literally walk from their house to their car, drive from the their house to work, walk into work, and then just do that same process to get home. And they're they're less than a thousand steps a day. Wow. I'm like, we gotta get moving more. You know, so seventy five hundred steps, what does that look like? So a mile has two thousand steps. So a mile can take you around twenty minutes to walk, give or take. I don't care if it's on your lunch break. I don't care if it's if it's split up into two or three walks. Call them movement snacks. I got that word from Lindsay Bellcase, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she called them movement snacks. So get you some movement snacks. Instead of reaching for the Doritos, go for a walk. And just get your, get your, get some movement in. Just that alone, you could probably knock off, you know, five pounds the first month. Seriously, just that make that, that one that one change, man. And use it as a time to just be out in nature, throw you on some headphones, listen to a podcast, like multitask. You know, listen to something that's going to make you laugh, learn, multitask. I call it double win. You know, you're moving and you're learning, being inspired. It's yep. a great way to to do that. And then the whole diet thing, man, like That's take, a big one. This take, is a big one. Yeah, man. and I always say just so much so much out there. Dude. If I was a newbie right now, I would be so overwhelmed because you got the you got carnivore diet, you got keto, Come you on, got intermittent man. fasting, you got low carb. And there's a lot of information out there and they're all what I call vehicles and tools and and there's nothing really wrong with either one of them, but just know that not any of them is the end all be all. You just got to find which one is sustainable for you. So if you want to use keto as a way to kickstart your, your journey, uh, then that's fine. But just know that you're going to have to, at some point, find a, a happy medium because you, you, at some point you're going to want to have carbs again, <laughs> you know, and there's nothing and to me. Honestly, I'm not a fan of keto because I like fruit. I like sweet potatoes and potatoes. As a matter of fact, me and me and my girlfriend, we slice up red potatoes every night and bake them in the oven. Um, huge, huge lover of carbs, but <laughs> I always call it low hanging fruit. Just take care of the low hanging fruit at first. If you've got a hundred pounds to lose or even 50, you know, low hanging fruit is like just stopping the liquid sugars, man, you know, like a large sweet tea at Chili's or McDonald's is going to have three or 400 calories and close to hundred grams of sugar. Jeez. I mean that right there, if you're having yeah. that every day, right. that's adding up to massive amounts of body fat. You could, if you just stop what you, if you just changed up what you drank, you could knock off. Like, honest God truth. If you're listening to this and if you if you just started getting in more steps and changed up what you drank, and that's all you did. I'm talking about you still got your burger, you just changed up your beverage, you would probably lose ten pounds the first month. Ten pounds of sheer body fat. Man. Off you, off your frame. So just low hanging fruit like sugars. And then, you know, just being more aware of how much calories and stuff. Like people don't realize, like, you know, the most humans if I had to put like one number on it, it can probably get by around 2000 calories a day, give or take. Mm-hmm. All right. Most people they're, they're, they're already over 3000 by lunch. Most, most <laughs> Americans, right. by the time you go through Chick-fil-A or Bojangles or Starbucks, and then by the time you go get something at lunch for the coworkers, most people are already at, at 3000 calories per day. So, and you can, you can change it up. If you still want to go to a restaurant, like, I use Chick-fil-A a lot because they're so popular and they're usually pretty widespread across the country. They have a, a thing called an egg white grill. 
you can double up on the egg whites. You can request that. Just go through the drive through get you a Coke Zero or a half and half sweet, unsweet tea. Say you want an egg white grill with, with uh, two egg whites added to it, and that's going to give you 40 grams of protein and right at 360 calories. Huge hack. Huge hack right there. That you, mm-hmm. can still, you can still have your, your Chick-fil-A fix, but it's going to be a lot less calories than, say, your typical biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I think I think that's key, man. That advice is key because, um, again, it it goes back to the same old stuff, dude. The reason people don't the reason people don't make don't ever make any progress is because they get overwhelmed because they feel like they have to change their entire freaking way they eat, shop, no, it's everything all all at once, and that if they don't do that. Then, then it's not going to produce any results. And just know it's a numbers game. Yeah, you're right, man. That's why people fail because they go from eating everything under the sun to to trying to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice. That's yep. not gonna that's not gonna be sustainable, yeah. man. Yeah. So if you're if you're truly a person that has been utilizing restaurants and fast food most of your life, the best thing you can do is just change up what you're ordering and still and, and just use that as a baby step. I'm not saying I'm, I'm at some point I would like to see you graduate to not ordering fast food every meal, mm-hmm. but it, that, that doesn't, that doesn't have to be the first step. Yep. First yep. step could just be, let's get in some more movement. Let's cut back a little bit on the liquid sugars and let's just change up what I'm ordering. And technology is beautiful, man. Like you can pull up the Chick-fil-A app and literally build your own sandwich right in front of you. And it updates the calories and nutrition. So to break this down, to keep it simple, try to keep, for your meals, try to keep most of your meals around five or 600 calories and your snacks around 350-ish. Mm-hmm. That gives you a good kind of guideline through the day. So whether you go to Chili's, whether you're ordering at a restaurant, just know you need to keep each meal around five or 600 calories. And then if you want a snack, keep it around 250, 300. And that would put you on track to be around that 2,000-ish calories per day, which if you're a really overweight person will be a, a good deficit for you to lose some some weight. Yeah. Females keep them around 400 calories per meal, around 200 calories a snack. So it don't matter if you go to Chick Fil A, Chili's, smoothie shop. Just keep those numbers in your mind and don't look at food as good or bad. Um, you know, just look at it as, as as calories and fuel, and just use that whole concept as a baby step to get the ball rolling. And later on, like I said, I would like to see you get to a point where fast food is not part of your daily life. But don't don't worry about that right now. Yeah, yeah, man, that's good advice, dude. You, you know the reason I the reason I have to, or the reason I'm so thankful that we can have people like you on to give advice like that is because I, I don't know, man. I'm at, I'm just at a place. I'm at a place personally where it's hard for me to give advice like that because if you ask me, like, what do I need to do to start? I'm I'm yelling at people all the time about being fat, man. Um, and it resonates with some people. It helps some people. But then if that same person that's like, Chad, you know what? You're right. I'm freaking a lump of crap right now. What do I need to do? Right. Yeah. My advice would be like, well, just eat all whole foods and <laughs> eat until you're full and yeah. don't eat anymore. Like, yeah. don't no, like I don't snack. Like and I only eat until I'm full, right? And I don't look at food as some. I, I have no problem. I have no issues with this relationship. I have no relationship with food. I have no mental, emotional attachment with food whatsoever. It's just I know this has the things that my body needs to run on it. And and as a matter of fact, I probably don't even eat enough. You know what I I eat every day? I eat four eggs in the morning with a handful of ground beef in it two pieces of toast. I don't snack at all. I eat a smoothie for lunch and then I eat a steak for dinner with a little bit of rice or sweet potato or something like that. Like I own, that's all I don't ever snack and I don't ever eat anything out of a package, a wrapper, unless I'm out here racing or doing a long run and I need some quick sugary fuel. Like, but that to me is just like, why are you having such a hard time with that? What, like, what are you talking about? A snack, man? Well, you got you got people that were that were raised, and I and I, I'll ask these 
people these questions, not because I want to like judge them, but I, and I tell them this up front, I'm just doing it more for data collecting and the psych, learning the psychology and the habit behaviors of, of people and humans. And most of the time when you got somebody that's really overweight, they grew up around parents that were very sedentary, that were doing nothing but microwave dinners, takeout pizzas, buffets, every evening with the family. Salisbury These, steak. And that TV yes, dinner, son. Yes, yes. Salisbury so, like, steak, boy. They had never even like cooked anything in their life, like not even a chicken breast. They don't even know what a, just a chicken breast or rice or sweet potato tastes like or green beans, not unless it's yeah. like smothered in cheese. God or, forbid an avocado. Right. So when they, when you get, they get into their 20s and 30s and they're 100 pounds overweight, when they hire somebody like me, I've learned you got to meet them where they are. Man. You can't, you can't just... It's so easy for people like me and you to just say, eat, eat whole foods. I call them Jesus foods. That's how I, cause a lot of times people don't know what whole foods are. <laughs> yeah. So I always say, Hey, if it was around back in Jesus's time, it's a, it's a real food. You know, if Jesus had access to it, which it usually comes from a animal plant ground or a tree, then it's good. But you take a person that has never had any foods like that in th their entire life. They honestly don't like the way it tastes because when you take a kid that has been eating nothing but McDonald's happy meals, and juice boxes that has did nothing but prime their taste buds to only expect a fireworks show of of dopamine hit every time they eat. Yeah. So if they they've got used to that super highly pal palatable foods. So when you take that person that's now in their mid twenties and thirties that's three hundred fifty plus pounds and ask them to eat sweet potato and rice and chicken, they they truly don't like the way it tastes. I can't imagine what that probably tastes like to them. Gosh, it's probably like a like a, I don't know. You know. It's got yeah, it's got to be like so bland, bland and and that's the problem with humans, man. We're so used to swinging food because and I'll tell this story about the Chick Fil A. I, I had went years without having just a regular chicken sandwich. I'd always got like if I did anything at Chick Fil A, it was always like when I was in a pinch for like I would get a Cool Wrap. And for you Chick Fil A lovers about the Cool Wrap, the Cool Wrap comes stock with a packet of dressing called avocado lime ranch dressing we'll get this the packet of dressing has more calories in it than the actual wrap <laughs> so yeah, right. a lot of times people will get the cool wrap thinking they're being healthy but they'll squeeze that dressing all over i'm like no yeah. keep the dressing off just just get you some like hot sauce and call it good but no i had ordered me i was like i was feeling a little bit i don't know just craving something bad what do you want to call it i ordered me a chicken sandwich and they can't that thing came in a nice warm foil packet take it out the buns all toasted and buttery i took a bite into it and i swear to god i've never been hooked on like drugs or like cocaine but i, I think that's probably what it felt like <laughs> <laughs> the dopamine that flooded my body and the the, the the taste buds just off that that you know msg uh the, all the preservatives all the taste good chemicals yep. and it just it just flooded my system to where I, it messed with me for a few days I, I was craving that man i'd be waking up at night thinking about a chicken sandwich yep. Yep. so this is what people are eating every day you know going through restaurants and that's the thing is like i can take a chicken sandwich and put it on a kitchen plate and it just be sitting there all lonely in the middle and that chicken sandwich is 400 calories you know a lot went into that chicken sandwich to make it you know like all kind of chemicals preservatives I think there's 60 something odd ingredients in a Chick-fil-A sandwich, believe it or not. But most people see it as a bun, piece of chicken and a pickle. Mm -hmm. There's like 60 something ingredients by the time they got it from wherever their factory is to the processing it to, to you and all the seasonings. So that's 400 calories. And m most time that chicken sandwich is not going to fill you up. You know, you're going to want something else. You know? It don't fill you it up. It don't. Like that's why no. you got to get your waffle, waffle fries and everything else. Or you can take 10 minutes out of your time, throw some chicken tenders in the air fryer steam you some broccoli in a broccoli uh, microwavable bag, throw you a sweet potato in the microwave, that whole kitchen plate is going to be overflowing with stuff. Same amount of calories, but more volume and more nutritious. Wow. Yeah. Huge, huge, like visual. I'm actually going to do that one day for a little video on the gram just to show people that the difference from a, from a volume standpoint, calorie and a micronutrient standpoint. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Dang it, man. That's good stuff, brother. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. It's it's like I say, it's that that's the side that's the side that I don't take yeah. the time to and, express or or remember to me. Yeah, it's just And it, to throw in some of the the stuff that you like, the whole foods <laughs> it, as a beginner, if you just get in more steps, seventy five hundred minimum per day, eventually shoot for ten, get you a cheap Fitbit, just start being aware of your movement. That's the first thing. 
and then start being aware of the calories. Or if you just strategically tell yourself you're going to work in five Jesus foods per day, I don't care what it, what other parts of your diet look like. Make sure you get in five per day. So if you're if you're winding down in the evening, I want you to think back that I have five Jesus foods today. You know, if you just if you just did that, that's going to work in some highly nutritious foods to where you're giving your body some good nutrition to where you might not crave that milkshake. Yep. You know, because you're going to be so full off the fiber in an apple or a sweet potato yep. or, or broccoli or oats. I think know. that's why I don't <laughs> snack. Right. I think that's why I don't snack. It's because I, I, everything that I'm eating is is straight, usually straight from the garden or straight from my chicken's butt or, yeah, you, you know, straight from I, I'm getting, I'm gathering it out of my front yard. Yeah, berries. I tell people if you're if you're in the evening and you're craving something, you're like contemplating whether or not you want to grab the Ben and Jerry's ice cream or whatever. Get you a big old bowl full of berries, man. Like blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. It don't matter if they're frozen. Throw you a little bit of whipped cream on there, Cool Whip. That whole bowl of berries is going to slap, fill you up, and only be like 200 calories. Dude, my wife started insane. doing that recently. It's insane, man. Like, she, so she, what she does is she takes a banana and cuts it up, takes a handful of nuts, usually like walnuts or something, yeah. throws it on there. There's a big spoonful of um, Icelandic yogurt or Greek yogurt yep. and then some cinnamon. And she Beautiful. stirs that up, dude. And so I'm a ice. I, I told you guys I only eat whole foods. I lied, actually. I love ice cream. Okay. This is one thing that I do eat from a package is, I, dude, I'm an ice cream guy. Same here, man. All right. There have been multiple occasions where I've been out of ice cream and I'm craving my daggone ice cream of an evening. And I'm like, well, crap, I just want something to like finish yes. after dinner, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so I'm like, she, Brooke calls it banana surprise. I'm like, make me one of the banana surprises. Good. I eat that dang thing, dude. And it, yeah. it's more satisfying than eating the bowl of ice cream. Yeah. yeah well. And it's a banana yogurt a handful of nuts and cinnamon. It's insane. Yeah, Greek yogurt. They, 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 Oikos. Oikos. There's a, there's, a, there's this vanilla yogurt cup made by a company called Ratio. Some of the most smoothest, best tasting vanilla you ever have in your life. And they're they're in the little individual cups you peel the lid back. Twenty five grams of protein. It's the most smoothest vanilla, and they make them in other flavors too. But yeah, like you said, you get that. Crush some walnuts on there. Put some banana slices in. Some blueberries. Man, you're golden. It it is it yeah it's it it is, it's a really good alternative. I, I love food, and is I've, I've twenty years in I've found a really good way to balance, um, making sure I I've, I've get I'm getting in all my whole foods from a micronutrient standpoint. But I I'm heck, most of my dinners are my own flatbed flatbread pizza creations and my own ice cream that I make in my Ninja Creamy. So I always, I got a shirt that says, ask me how to get shredded off pizza and ice cream. <laughs> it's legit. Most of my male clients are on, they love the, the, the flatbread pizzas and ice cream recipe. That sounds dinner. good. Yeah. That sounds good, man. But I'm making sure they're hitting all their other, mount, their other marks too, you know, making mm -hmm. sure they're getting in their fruit, uh, their greens, you got check marks and all those. And yeah, have you some, have you some pizza and ice cream. So you actually, do you, you actually take on clients to work through this? Yes. Process. On, online coaching. I did not know that you were doing it's, that, man. It's, it's um, a new endeavor I started in March. Um, same, like I told you, I want to be able to reach more people. And we have a lot of in-person consultations that, that happen at the smoothie shop, but I wanted to help people remotely. So yeah, I knew that building an online nutrition program would be the best way to scale that and help more people. So for the longest time, I was still attracting local people. I was like, oh, the whole point of this was to, to get people. Out. But, you know, I, I took them on and helped them. Finally, like month number four, I landed a guy in Texas. Now I'm working with a guy out in uh, uh, like Nevada area. So it's, okay. it's slowly starting. His tentacles are starting to spread a little bit. Dude, I love that you're doing that. And I love that you came on the podcast, man, because it's really, I think it's, it's really good for a podcast where I'm always yelling at people for being fat and out of shape to, to then have you on and saying, all right, guys, yeah. I've been there, man. Uh, I got, 
I, I'm passionate about this and I got a resource that you can lean into Yeah, if you're in that spot, dude. So you guys listening, if you're in that spot, um, you need to reach out to Keith. And the thing about it is, man, a lot of people also can, a lot of people also can say, I'm just going to try to do this by myself. Most males will say that. Yeah, that's what that's 60, what everybody's thinking. 60, 60, I think I did the, it's been a while since I crunched the numbers, 65% of my client base currently is females because females can drop their ego and ask for help, to whereas mostly males have a hard, hard time doing that. Yeah, yeah. And the, I mean, the, the true answer is yes, there will be a time that you can, that you will start doing this by yourself. If I, I'm sure Keith, your main objective with these individuals you work with, I'm sure it's probably to work yourself out of a job. My goal is to teach them how to make this a lifestyle, not just another 12 week challenge. Yep. You know, that's what I tell people. This is not, you know, a, a, a get, get skinny crash course diet plan. This is where I, I spend a lot of time teaching you and uh, guiding you over a course of 12 to 16 weeks on how to like make this stick for the long haul. Yep. So that would be ultimate success for you yep. with these types of clients is to see them make these changes to, to relearn, to, to educate them to the point that they don't need you anymore. Nope. That is just part of that, that to me would be the ultimate reward yep. doing the job yes. that you're doing. Yep. Yeah. I can, I can really resonate with that. It's man. awesome. Especially when you know, it, it spills over into the, the, the family. Like when you, they post, we have a little online community where they'll, they'll post their kids having some of the same like protein waffles, man, come on, you know, dude. stuff like that. And the, the whole family dynamic is starting to kind of change for the better. That's, that's why I do what I do. It's it, what keeps me going. Dude, it, it hurt. It, it freaking hurts my heart when, uh, like, we went to the fair the other day in Polk County. All right, Polk County. You know where Polk County is? Oh, Cedar Town? Yep. Yeah. Okay, we went to the fair in Cedar Town. To see the amount of obesity I know, man. in children. That's bad. Okay, I can look at an adult. And, and I can kind of get over it, right? Because uh, in a an adult, you have you have resources. You have you have ultimately you have control, or you can gain control if you choose to make that commitment. Yep. But the amount of obesity in these children, man, was astounding. I I was literally seeing like not just one or two. Like I, I, I was witnessing like yeah, dozens uh, and dozens of kids four years old that were so fat, they looked disfigured. And that's going to be a, a constant generational thing until somebody breaks it. And why can't, why can't that be you look like listeners? Like, why can't you just be the one that says, I know what I'm feeling like. It sucks. Do I really want my child to grow up and feel this, this way? You know? Like, why not, why can't you be the one to man up or woman up and, and break that curse, generational curse or that pattern? Let's, let's be the one. Yeah. Where can people find you and reach out to you for that? So Instagram, uh, the, the Keith Osmond is my Instagram handle and I'm, uh, working on a, a website right now. It's not live yet. It's been a process to get all the videos uploaded because my goal is to, I got I got to basically animate me and multiply me to where I can help more people on a larger, even larger platform. So we're gonna have like courses you can buy and see me speaking eventually. Mm -hmm. But the best place to reach me right now is the the Keith Osment K E I T H O Z M E N T on Instagram, or you can look up all the Spartan Smoothies Rome, yeah, uh, or Facebook Keith Osment. And from that point, if you're interested in any kind of private online coaching, we just I just fill you a, a little intake form kind of application type deal. make sure you know you're you're the right fit because mm -hmm. i'm i'm not i might not be the coach for everybody but you might i want to I I make sure i'm working with a, a person that's ready really truly ready to make the move for massive action because it's i did 50 dollars diet plans for years i did 100 dollars challenges for years but a lot of those people stayed stuck so this this is much more than that yeah yeah and what's your uh what's your podcast called omni wellness studio okay yep, where can um, people find it Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube. I can't wait to start listening, man. So it's uh, 
O M N I Omni Wellness Studio. And me and my girlfriend, we kind of tag team it. She'll be on there with some female guests and some sometimes me and her together. Mm-hmm. And sometimes she'll be solo. I'll be solo. We kind of tag team it. But it's everything life, business, fitness, nutrition, entrepreneurship. There's been athletes on there. There's been cancer <laughs> survivors on there. There's been, you know, investors, real estate gurus, people that's lost 300 pounds on there, people that's anorexic and has had to gain, you know, weight. So that's kind of the blend of episode you'll get i like it man tune into that i like it yeah well brother thank you so much for your time today man that was a good uh, conversation Chad, like i appreciate y'all yeah, inviting man. me man like, that was uh, uh well we got to cover the whole does success make you soft thing i think in yeah. depth and obviously that's been something i've been thinking about and trying to trying to just meal about in my mind and put some sense to it so uh, it was great just to have that conversation, just to get it out there and to talk through the all the aspects of that. Man, it was good, and I think I, you're right. I think if you if we're if we're truly wired, which I know you're wired this way, and I know I'm wired this way, I don't think we'll ever get complacent. You know, I think we we're too hard on our, hard on ourselves at times, but I think it's always going to be in us to 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 keep leveling up a notch. Yep. Yep. It's just in our blood. For sure, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, we won't be going live tomorrow on YouTube, by the way. This is your live episode for the week. We appreciate you guys joining us, man. Uh, I love you guys. And uh, always thankful that you tune in, uh, that you watch, that you listen. Uh, We couldn't have a podcast or a YouTube channel or any of that stuff without you guys that make it what it is. So uh, just want to express my gratitude for each and every one of you. And Lord willing, we'll see you next week. See y'all later. Enough said.